This is Michael Sulak again, and this video is going to be covering a topic that we're going to use for the rest of the semester, which is called the sampling distribution of x-bar. So what is the sampling distribution of x-bar? It is what happens if we take a bunch of different samples from a population and look at how the mean of those samples varies. X-bar changes. If we repeatedly sample, we don't get the same X-bar every time. I've imagined that I have my big population here. What I'm going to do is take a sample. I could find the average of that sample. And then maybe I'd take another sample and find another average. And take another sample and find another average. And keep doing this a lot. Repeated sampling. And if I take all these sample means and I look at a distribution of them that distribution is what we call the sampling distribution of x-bar let's look at what this looks like using some actual data and some actual repeated sampling so here's the variable that I want to look at it's the miles per gallon of cars from the year 2017 it's just looking at for one car and so when we're talking about a distribution we like to think about three things and so the shape of this distribution is fairly clearly right skewed. The center for all the vehicles shown, the mean miles per gallon is 34. And the spread as measured by the standard deviation is fairly large, 18 miles per gallon. And so now let's look what happens if we take a bunch of samples and look at the average of those samples. These repeated samples that we take are all going to be the same size. Let's start out by looking at miles per gallon with the smallest sample size we can possibly have, which is two. This is definitely a dinky sample, but suppose we found two cars, then our X bar is going to be the average of those two things, which is going to be 27.5, and we might want to display this in a distribution. Here it is. It looks a little silly. We, we just have one sample here, one X bar. This isn't super interesting. Let's jack up the number of samples we're taking. We're taking 10 samples now. So we're going to have 10 X bars. These X bars are going to vary. We're looking at 10 sample means here and we have a display of how they're changing. When we say what happens if we repeatedly sample from a population, we're not kidding. Let's jack up the number of samples we take. Let's say we're going to take 100 samples. So we're going to have 100 X bars. So you can see that these frequencies are going up because we're taking more samples, the sampling distribution of X bar. So maybe I should write that. So here we're looking at the distribution of a hundred thousand different sample means that all came from samples of size 2. When our samples are size 2, the shape of them is right skewed. Let's look what happens if we increase the sample size. Here is a graph if our sample size was instead twice as big. So there's a hundred thousand X bars in this histogram right here. It's still right skewed. Let's double the sample size and see what the new sampling distribution of X bar looks like. Now we're looking at what would happen if we doubled our sample size and we had samples of size 8. You'll notice that it's a little less right skewed. This one doesn't look near as crazy as the last one. The important thing to notice here is that the shape of this distribution of X bar changes if our sample size is changing. The sample size matters. So let's double our sample size again to 16. Two really important things to think about is that as our sample size increases, the distribution of X bar is becoming less variable and the shape is becoming more normal. The right skewness that we saw before is a lot less pronounced here 
So let's see what happens if we double the sample size again. So here's 100,000 samples of size 32. It's still a little bit skewed, but less so. Change the scale here so we sort of zoomed in. This last picture is if we had samples of size 64. So this is 100,000 X bars, each one coming from a sample of size 64. And look at how normal this looks. There's a slight amount of right skewness, but it basically looks like a bell shape. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. It's much more normal. So as a reminder of what the heck just happened, we started out by looking at miles per gallon of individual cars and noticed that that distribution was highly right skewed and the mean was 34 miles per gallon and the standard deviation was 18. And then we looked at what happened as we took a bunch of samples and looked at the sampling distribution of X bar. And here we have four different sampling distributions of X bar that come from different sizes. Notice those two things we talked about. These are becoming more normal and they're also becoming less variable. These samples were all over the place when we just had samples of size 4. By the time you get to samples of size 32 cars, it's pretty unlikely that you would select 32 cars randomly and have the average miles per gallon of 32 cars be as high as, say, 80. This sample distribution of X bar is much less variable. Increasing the sample size decreases the variability of X bar. And we have a formula for this. We've talked about how the standard deviation measures the variability of something. And for this data, the standard deviation of individual cars was 18 miles per gallon. We're using a subscript X here to let us know that these are talking about individual cars. Now we're going to be talking about the sampling distribution of X bar. And so we're going to want to talk about the variability of the sample average. We're still going to use standard deviation, but we're going to throw an X bar on here to remind us that we're talking about the average of a sample. We said that that becomes less variable, so what's going to happen is that we're going to take the variability of the individuals and we're going to divide that by the square root of the sample size. So this quantity here is going to talk about the variability of X bar. And if you think about a fraction, what's going to happen to this fraction is that as N increases, the variability of the sample mean is going to decrease because if the top of a fraction stays the same as the bottom increases, the entire thing decreases. Just for a really quick example, as the bottom increases, this fraction becomes smaller. And so let's look at the other big important part of a distribution, which is where the heck the center is. So just like we had two quantities for the variability of individual values, throw a subscript X on here to remind us that it's talking about individuals. And so we're going to wonder about the center of the sampling distribution of a bunch of different sample means. The center of the sample average, which we can call, we're going to call it mu sub X bar. For individual cars, the center miles per gallon was 34. Let's look at where 34 is on all these distributions. By the time we get to 100,000 samples, where value does it look like? X bars are centered around. Generally, these samples are centered around 34, which isn't super surprising. 34 was the mean of my individual car miles per gallon. And if I just take a bunch of samples a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times, and I look at all those sample means, they're going to be centered at the same value as the original population they're going to be centered at the average miles per gallon of individual cars. What this means is that the center of individual values and the center of the sample average is the exact same thing. They're the same quantity. So we'll write that like this. The center of the sample average is the same thing as the center of the individual values. That doesn't change. So let's get a summary here of the sampling distribution of X bar and what we've just learned. We've learned about the shape and the center and the variability of that distribution. The shape of that distribution becomes normal as our sample size increases. 
and that idea is known as the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says that the shape of the x-bar is going to become normal the bigger our sample size is. And as a general rule is that the less normal the original population, the bigger the sample size we need to see that shape becoming normal. So if we had a variable that was much more normal to begin with, say we had a bunch of heights, then the sampling distribution of x-bar would become normal for samples of very very low sizes but the central limit theorem theorem says that no matter what the distribution of the original population if it's miles per gallon with a really really right skewed distribution if we've got a bunch of samples that have big enough sample sizes then all those sample means will be normally distributed and the center of the sampling distribution of x bar is just the exact same as the center of the original variable. And the amount of variability in the sampling distribution of x bar is going to be less than the amount of variability in the original population, which isn't surprising. If you're talking about the average miles per gallon of 64 cars, that number is not going to stray that much from the actual mean. It would be super surprising to measure 64 cars and have their sample mean be 90 miles per gallon. That would be crazy because you would need 64 cars that all were like electric cars that were all really high miles per gallon. Whereas if I was just talking about an individual car, that's more likely because all I would need to do is pick one car that happened to be an electric car versus picking 64 that all happened to have really, really high miles per gallon. And these are all really, really important ideas that we'll use for the rest of the semester. If we wanted to know what's the average GPA of students at CCD, well, that's a parameter that's mu x. We're asking what is mu x? So how would we find that? To answer this question, we'd take a sample and use x bar, use our sample mean to estimate the truth. We would maybe ask 20 students what their GPA was and then say, okay, well, we're going to use the mean of our sample to estimate the mean of our population. And so we need to know about the sampling distribution of x bar to be able to really talk about things that are important like like how close was our sample mean to the true mean?